What is cellular senescence and how can I identify it in my samples? I'm Srikant, Senior Product Scientist at Cell Signaling Technology, and this is CST Tech Tips. If your research is related to development, aging, or diseases such as cancer, you may be interested in investigating whether senescence is involved in your model system. But what defines cellular senescence? First, let's note that the term senescence may be used broadly to refer to aging of organisms, while cellular senescence, also referred to as replicative senescence, focuses on the cellular scale. Senescent cells withdraw from the cell cycle and stop dividing, but they stay metabolically active. This is a normal feature of both aging and development in vivo, and it can be observed in vitro as well. You probably know that when propagating cell lines, a best practice is to mark the passage number on the culture flasker dish and carefully track the number of times cells have been split. There are several reasons to do this, one of which is that if you continue splitting non-transformed cells long enough, you'll eventually observe that they slow and then stop dividing. This finite limit of the number of times the cell populations will divide before becoming senescent is known as the Hayflick limit, reported in 1961 paper by Hayflick and Moorhead. Senescence normally occurs during development and aging, but it can also be triggered by the DNA damage response and stress signaling pathways, and it's been linked to various age-related pathologies, including cancers, cardiovascular, metabolic, and neurodegenerative diseases. Researchers working in these fields often rely on the senescence biomarkers to distinguish it from quiescence, which allows re-entry into the cell cycle, and from terminal differentiation, which involves cell cycle exit as the result of normal developmental cues and program differentiation. Cellular senescence is associated with a flattened cell morphology, increased secretory and pro-inflammatory activity, chromatin reorganization, and shortening of telomeres. We'll highlight a few of these senescence markers in this video, but before we do, I want to emphasize that there is no universal marker and no single assay to determine senescence. For example, not all senescent cells will be positive for every biomarker, and some of these biomarkers may also be observed in non-senescent phenomena, such as quiescence or apoptosis. However, by examining multiple biomarkers in combination, you can increase your confidence in your results. A three-stage workflow, starting with screening, followed by co-staining for verification, and then moving on to analysis of biomarkers for specific types of senescence is recommended. I'll give an overview of each stage, but for a more comprehensive guide, you can download a PDF of our senescence ebook. Check the link section below this video. And while you're there, let us know in the comments what disease areas or research topics are you studying? And don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's start with the first stage of the workflow, initial screening. Beta-galactosidase is commonly used as a marker. Its expression in lysosomes increases during senescence. By applying the chromogenic substrate XGAL to fix cells, you can detect the pH-dependent beta-galactosidase activity, which will show up as a blue stain using standard light microscopy. This is a quick method for qualitative detection of senescence. Stay tuned later in the video for information on how you can perform quantitative assays of beta-galactosidase activity using fluorescent detection. Often, our scientists receive tech support calls and emails asking about blue excal crystals appearing in the sample, making it hard to interpret results. To avoid this, we recommend dissolving excal in the solvent DMF to make your stock solution. Use polypropylene or glass tubes, since polystyrene is not compatible with DMF. Another tip is to check the pH of a diluted excal staining solution. The pH is too low, you'll get false positives, and if it's too high, you'll get false negatives. So confirm the pH is between 5.9 and 6.1, or adjust as necessary after adding the X-gal. Finally, evaporation can contribute to crystal formation, so seal your plates with parafilm or a tight cover to prevent this. If you do observe X-gal crystals or deposits, you can try this method to remove them. Remove the staining solution and wash your sample with PBS. Then incubate with 50% DMSO to dissolve the crystals. Remove the 50% DMSO and wash again before mounting an imaging. Moving to the second stage, a commonly used senescence marker is P16 Inc4A, which controls cell cycle arrest. Its expression is repressed in the absence of stress and turns on during senescence. Other markers, including the nuclear protein lamin 1B and proliferative markers, are associated with reduced expression. The third stage involves markers for different types of senescence. I briefly mentioned the secretory phenotype which includes increased expression and exocytosis of cytokines, growth factors, and proteases. This is known as SASP for short. Several targets associated with secretory phenotype are highly highlighted here. 
it's worth examining several markers because this expression of the individual SASP components can vary in different contexts. Other types of senescence may be evaluated using markers for DNA damage response targets or markers in the PI3 kinase mTOR signaling pathway. Again, there isn't a single marker to give you a yes or no answer as to whether the cells in your samples are senescent. So you'll want to examine several markers and cross-reference data points. For many researchers, kits are a convenient way to find a combination of markers that work for their experimental model. The senescence antibody sampler kit includes markers to assess cell cycle, DNA damage, and SASP. If you need to further explore SASP, several markers are collected in the SASP sampler kit. If you want to go beyond qualitative visual assessment, our scientists have developed two kits for measuring beta-galactosidase activity with fluorescence-based readouts, one for use with flow cytometry and one for use with plate readers. Both of these kits will allow you to perform quantitative measurement of senescence with statistical power in cell populations. We'll include the links in the description below this video for more information about these kits. In addition to selecting the right reagents, solid experimental design and comparison with markers for other forms of cell cycle exit, such as apoptosis, can go a long way to reassure you that what you're measuring is reflective of the biology happening in your samples. If you have questions about any of our kits, antibodies, or protocols, you can always get in touch with a CSD scientist at cellsignal.com support. For more tech tip videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notifications when new videos go live. Thanks for watching and good luck with your experiments.